Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our worldwide audience, IAU ones. I, Professor Nada Ratkovic, the co-founder of IAU Europe, the president of IAU Research Center, country director Croatia, board member of IAU, heartily welcome you all with a big and warm greeting. Love to encompass you all from the International Internship University on this auspicious occasion of the G20 Summit 2023, jointly organized by International Internship University with G20 International envisaged topic for today, international taxation with the presidency reform, reshape, restructure, and reconstituted the international tax architecture. So today we will celebrate, collaborate, communicate, catalyze the changes to contribute to the citizenship community and country. We welcome all the researchers, experts, leaders, innovators, and change makers today again with you. But before we start, let me introduce our organizer. Piyush Pandit, the visionary educationist, always had a dream to provide education to every learner across the world. He believes that the world is changing drastically, so there is a need to make changes in the education system. Every day, something new. So with this thought, Sir Piyush Pandit concocted the world's first digital internship university, International Internship University in 2020. IAU is providing quality, skill-based, affordable, accessible, location, independent, and skill-based digital education to all the learners across the globe, along with internship opportunities, research facilities, through its thousand plus virtual courses to all learners across the globe, through the platform of massive open online courses with the aim of promoting internship opportunities and research facilities to its learners. IAU has been accredited, affiliated with the World Education Organization, VEO, International Accreditation Organization, IAO, with United Nations and collaborating with the world's top universities and educational institutions. In a short span of time, IAU has spread its wings in 195 countries, six continents, with a team of 1,000 plus experienced and qualified global educators across the world. IAU is registered in India, Australia, Nepal, and with USA government. Digital education by International Internship University is for all, without any hurdles, as per the own wish of the learner, without any financial stress, which is easily accessible in every corner of the world. Today, let me start with our amazing group of 20G20. Group 20G20 is a paramount platform for fostering international economic cooperation, pivotal in shaping and fortifying the global framework and governance concerning crucial economic matters worldwide. India proudly assuming the presidency of G20 from December 1, 2022 to November 30, 2023, is embracing the opportunity to spread out the changes. So I want to say here that this amazing project guide is guided by the resolute leadership of Dr. Sri Vidya Sukumar from the United Arabian Emirates and with unwarranted support from the esteemed International Internship University, the core com com committee and team, and we are prepared to unveil a transformative initiative. IAU is poised to launch an empowering endeavor to revolutionize the world of women, yes. social entrepreneurs. Additionally, we are setting to convene an esteemed worldwide think tank to foster comprehensive discussions to achieve equality for all an equal world education and opportunities for all the individuals. With the upcoming G20 summit being organized virtually, we have to appropriate this opportunity to transcend geographical boundaries and bring together brilliant minds from all corners of the globe. We can pave the way for a future where everyone can thrive through collaboration, 
innovation and collective determination. Let us join hands united in our pursuit of the world where every individual, irrespective of their gender or seems circumstances can unleash their full potential and contribute to the progress and prosperity of our global community. Together, we can make a lasting impact and create a legacy of equality for generations. So let me now call our great core team member, uh, Dr. Virginia Riviera. So Dr. Riviera, Dr. Virginia, please welcome. Thank you so much. I hope that you're all doing well. I know that I am just starting my day here in sunny Puerto Rico. I am very excited to be here another Sunday of momentous G20. I want to thank you all for really accepting me here and having me here today. And I want to introduce our amazing team. We have a team that constantly is pushing the boundaries of education, seeking new ways to enhance their learning experience and make it more accessible and inclusive for everybody. Let me start by introducing our greatest professor, Nada. You just met her. And as you know, she is a force to be reckoned with around the world. She comes from us from Croatia. And as she said before, she's the president of our IIU Research Center. I also would like to introduce to you Ermina Rosco. She is from Romania. She's the president of the Women's Entrepreneurship Council, and she's the vice president of James International School. With us also, Dr. Snigda Kadum, and she is our project coordinator, and she is the principal of James International School. We also have Inga. Inga comes from us from Georgia. She is the president of IIU Europe, and she is also a master teacher from Georgia. With us today also is Dr. Sandy Balahi, our esteemed leader here with us today. And she is actually going to be receiving each one of our speakers today. And our project leader, that's Dr. Shavidia Sukumar. She's an educationist, a mentor, and a coach from the United Arabian Emirates. And she is definitely our greatest leader today. Again, my name is Virginia Rivera, and I am a core team member. And I come from the area of Caribbean. I also would like to talk to you about our community partners. Our community partners are two very important groups. One is the GSFN, and they have been established to provide a common platform that helps its members, financial institutions benefit from opportunities emerging through transformation to sustainable economy. They support their members in developing capacities to integrate sustainability across the board. They foster initiatives and help build public-private partnerships. They promote sustainability, lending, and investment. They offer networking opportunities to member financial institutions. They do multilateral organizations, the government bodies, business and industry, and other stakeholders for sharing experiences and ideas. This group also provides a forum to support the development and execution of sustainable finance policies and practices. They present a marketplace for members to promote their sustainable finance expertise, business ideas, products and services, and to search for partners to develop and execute programs, projects, and activities. They perform any other task that promotes sustainable finance. Thank you. Our other group is iGen. The 74 million young Americans born between 1995 and 2012 comprise the most important generation in the nation's history, both in size and composition. One out of four Americans from age five to 22 have been collectively dubbed the iGen generation, a shortened descriptor for internet generation. The iGen handle won over numerous other suggested names, namely Generation Z, which was doomed to failure because there was no other generation to call itself the letter before. That generation of those born between 1981 and 1995 became better known as millennial. Other Generation Z replacements are Generation Homeland Generation, Centennials, Post Millennial, The Founders, I Generation, and no others, I'm sure, but all of them fell and were not of public opinion. That a generation has its own moniker is far from unusual, giving the names of population groups from the past. Those several periods that we call generations ranging from 12 and 25 years ago 
were known as the lost generation, the interbellum generation, the greatest generation, the silent generation, and its subset, war babies, baby boomers, Generation X, and the ever famous millennials. Not only has this group become the largest social cohort, numbering millennials and baby boomers together, the iGen generation or the iGeners is also the most ethnically diverse generation compared to its predecessor. So thank you to our community partner. Thank you, uh, Professor Nava. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Riviera. Uh, now I want to invite our amazing project director, Dr. Srividya Sukumar. So welcome, Dr. Srividya. We really like you coming from United Arabian Emirates and doing this amazing project. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nada. Thank you, Dr. Virginia. That was very kind of you. Well, uh, we will brief about the topic a little later as our chief guests uh, have to go uh, as a chief guest for another function. May I please take the privilege of inviting and presenting before you Her Excellency, Madam Laila Rahal al Etfani. She is a president and founder of Business Gate. I am Africa Platform Business Incubator for SMEs. She's a president woman and youth empowerment for international diplomat relations of AACID. She's the head of diplomacy and protocol WBC. Talking about start startups, leadership, empowering women, business collaboration and digital transformation. Ma'am's motto is that recognizing and harnessing women's strengths will not only enhance individual women lives, but also revolutionize our society and our world. That's what she said that's the motto that she follows. Uh, so ma'am has been a goodwill ambassador. She has been the international ambassador of peace and tolerance. She, madam, is again the goodwill ambassador of future leaders model UN Turkey. Madam is the ambassador of humanity. Madam is a brand ambassador of BQ Germany. Madam is a brand ambassador of XS7 Germany. Madam is a global ambassador of EARP Sierra Leone. Mad uh, Madam is a brand ambassador of Oyster Magazine. Madam is a brand ambassador of Explore Journal Magazine India. Madam is art brand ambassador of Art for You Gallery. Awards and recognitions to name a few, please, ma'am. Wow Records, Wow Awards, The Voice Award, She Award Dubai, Wellness and Health Award Dubai, Mavla Awards Turkey, Oscar of Best Entrepreneur Morocco, The Most Inspiring Women Award, Oyster Ma Magazine Award, and won the Best Ambassador for UAE Africa. Thank you, ma'am. It's always a privilege having you always on our show, and it's our honor to have you with us today, amidst us today. Ma'am, you're muted. We Thank are you, Dr. To Fredrika. We love you. Thank you to everyone who is here. This beautiful platform. All what you say, wrap it in one word. I am a good friend to 20G20. And I'm honored and blessed to be part always for the conferences and summit you do, IIU. Because you are the knowledge maker. Honorable guests, honorable partnership, honorable people who are here in this platform. It's amazing to be with high caliber speaker, with the people who oriented always to give the knowledge and to boost the humanity in a business and in humanity philanthropist field. Education and knowledge is more important. As she said, doctor, we are handling the startup. We welcome you, all of you to Dubai the land of opportunity, UAE, which is friendship with India always and the globe. All the nation are all most welcome for any collaboration, especially now the tax, the topic, fabulous you are presenting. We need the people like you to teach us and to put spot and highlight for the tax because we are starting that in UAE. Second, Always we need a friendhood and a people with the knowledge to guide us and to give us a consultancy. That's mean collaboration is well demand and partner strategic ship is well demand. The door is open for any opportunity as we are linked always with 20 G20 and international internship university is one of the high caliber we always refer to. So in the life we say, 
good friends is the best, but the partnership is more best because the partnership is monetizing and friendship is just warming the hand. We need both of them. Humanity is unity and diversity is inclusion. That diversity make us learn from each other no matter it is, which color skin, which religion, which party, whom you are, which degree, which level, we need always together. Hand by hand, we make the world better. We learn from you and you give us always the red carpet with G20 to another talents with others partners, with others people from all over the world. Thank you so much. Spasiva, merci beaucoup and Tika in India. God bless you. It's an honor always discussing with you. Doctor, you rock it. And I'm so proud of you with all your people. Thank you to the management. Thank you to the sponsorship. Thank you to everyone and each one making change and challenge and impact in this beautiful platform. We need you for new generation. You need you for a future leader. We need you for the businessman. We just signed a big contract in London with a global trader from Latino area. So we need you to tie up a hand with us because we have 165 country we are bringing to spot in Dubai. Especially we have the COP28 is coming for sustainability and climate change. And we need always knowledge. Thank you, G20. Thank you, IIU. We love you. God bless you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. We love you forever as ever, really. Your presence over here amidst us today has been a greatest privilege and honor, and we will take it further. Definitely, as you mentioned, we'll work for collaborations, we'll work, work for partnerships, and we will collaborate to move forward. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for your precious time. It's always a pleasure having you with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, moving further, coming back to the topic that we were discussing, that's the topic for the today. The global financial architecture refers to the framework of the institutions and agreements and the mechanisms that govern the international financial transactions, monetary policy coordination, and the financial stability. It encompasses various international organizations such as International Monetary Fund, IMF, World Bank, and the Bank of the International Settlements, BIS, as well as the regional financial institutions and bilateral agreements and so on to work on macroeconomic policy coordination, financial regulation and reforms, international trade and investment, development and global governance. The G20 operates through annual summits where leaders are and representations voice the developing countries in the global economic governance. So G20 operates these kind of annual summits where leaders and policymakers meet to discuss these issues and release statements outlining their collective commitments and policy directions. When a business activity crosses national borders, the question arises of where the profits from that activity should be taxed. In principle, there are at least three possibilities for assigning a taxing right. Source, the countries where the production takes place. Residence, the countries where a company is deemed to reside. Destination, the countries where the sales takes place. So generally applied tax architecture for determining where profits are taxed is now nearly 100 years old and designed, designated for the world in which the more trade was in physical goods or trade or made less significant contribution to the world GDP and the global value chains were not particularly complex. So this chapter on today briefly entices the traditional architecture belong, belonging to the tax commitment and sets the stage for the following chapters that provide more detailed explanations and sets of various possible approaches to developing a framework better suited to economic circumstances, one which could potentially be perceived as fairer among countries that now play a different roles in the global scenario and the value chains. So moving ahead, relating it to today's topic of international taxation on trade and investments and exports and imports up with his presidency as reform, reshape and restructure and reconstitute the international tax architecture. We have initiated the topics for discussion and our point, pointers of deliberation will be tax on the environment by Dr. Herbert Mandla-Motu, 
who is set to join us, who will be joining us very soon, who is a founder and uh, founder and visionary Africa Entrepreneurs Network, life and business coach, international relations and ambassador at International Nations. Uh, secondly, we have tax certainty and the progress of carbon pricing, which will be presented by Dr. Jo Pro Professor John Estes, who is STG4 Global Ambassador, CEO, founder, mentor for startups and NGOs, and especially for ESG gesture, and also for steering committee member, and also a professor and MBA author speaker. Thank you so much, Professor. Thanks for joining us. It will be a great pleasure to hear from you soon. Thirdly, we have enlisted the topic as base erosion and profit sharing, which is BEPS, which will be presented by Dr. Suchitra, who is, will be joining us from iGen Global. Point number four, Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. Mr. Balakrishnan will be joining us. Balaji Krishnan will be joining us, who is the Managing Director of Rangamani Associates, Chartered Accountants with the Head Office at Kota M Kerala Branch, or and, and also from different parts of Kerala, that is Chenganari, Kanjina Pali, and Kota Paliam, Truvalla, and Ernakulam. And point of five, addressing the challenges arising from the digitalization of the economy, Professor Gusto Alves will join us. Hey, Professor, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much for joining us so early. And uh, point number six, green finance for sustainable solutions will be dealt by uh, Ms. Divya Sumani, who is an involved insolvency professional, FCA, DC, uh, CS, DISA, Diploma in IFRCS, and ACCA UK, who is a certified concurrent auditor and certified peer reviewer. So the insights shared by the experts on the above pointers will aim to contribute the archives of the policies that will expand to include the things seven recommendations for action, which will try and lay the foundation for the resilient and inclusive financial growth and the tax architecture and the need for collaborative and swift efforts uh, will ensure a more sustainable future. The highlight will be on the need of resilient systems that can effectively respond to emergencies while addressing the broader global economic issues. Uh, so we welcome you all to join us on this collaborative effort. So let's celebrate, collaborate, communicate, and catalyst change to contribute to the citizenship. On that note, I would open the forum to the speakers of today, and I would, I would request Ma'am Sandhya Balaji to take over the room. Thank you so much. Over to you, Ms. Sandhya. Thank you. Greetings of the day. And uh, let us begin with our topics of deliberation. May we begin with uh, the uh, pointer tax certainty and progress with carbon pricing. We all know what carbon pricing and what carbon footprints are. So providing tax certainty involves creating stable and predictable tax policies. And when the tax policies are clear, it ensures lower emissions of carbon in the industries. And also, uh, by these effective carbon pricing mechanism, governments can create a framework that not only supports environment sustainability, but also fosters economic growth through a green innovation and responsible consumption. So to talk more about this and in detail, we have with us Professor Dr. Jose Estes, who's an accomplished entrepreneur and CEO of Exponentialist Platform, he has a strong academic background and diverse experience. He excels in corporate strategy, education, and public administration. Professor Steves is a recognized figure in third sector and CSR initiatives. He's known for his impactful social programs and fundraising campaigns. He's also a sort of speaker, prolific author, and a driving force in sustainable development. He's a UN specialist in sustainable development which shows his dedication to, for a, to shape a better future. His accolades include National Child Award in Social Education and Burn Efficiente Prise. So we welcome you, doctor, and welcome you to share your inputs on carbon pricing and tax policies. Well, uh, good morning, everyone from Brazil. I do understand that uh, depending on the country that we are uh, have the opportunity of this gathering of minds today. Like I used to say, it will be good afternoon and probably good night. 
Uh, it is really an honor to be here for the third consecutive time in order to join this outstanding group of professor, educator, lecturers in a very, let's say, a myriad of uh, possibilities to get these um, advices, uh, these expertise coming from the agenda into action worldwide. Uh, the particular subject of today that I'm, I am addressing probably is one of the key points of what's going on in terms of economy around the globe because it is related to carbon marketing. So everything that is connected to these green uh, financing initiatives will be uh, a must in the, coming, in the coming years. I believe it will be uh, also a boost to entrepreneurship innovation in, 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 in different areas. So it is really an honor to be here. Uh, I'm really proud to discuss further this subject with you. I will put uh, uh, my uh, email and my LinkedIn contact so you will be able to uh, follow me or to connect with me in order to exchange some other ideas in the present and in the coming future about this subject. So. Thank you very much for your invitation again. And I will uh, ask your permission uh, to um, share a screen with a humble and a small presentation to discuss about this uh, very important subject that we have, not only in terms of uh, finance and the economy globally, but of course, in terms of uh, climate change and, and how to achieve a more sustainable future. Thank you very much. Let's see. So I'm trying to share the screen here. Okay, sorry for a possible small delay in my presentation and I will put on a presentation mode. Okay, here it comes. Are you able to see it in an appropriate uh, way? Please, uh, please move this yours graphic. You need to click on that. It is not a full mode, please. You have a restriction, okay. so I'll, I'll wear it. You can click. Okay. See. Okay. Let's see what happened today. Yes. I will mm. share again the screen. Yes, and then you will see that it is writing uh, a law avoid. Let's see. You see? Okay. You see under, yes, click on that. Ativar, Ativar and Brazil. Please click on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that you I need am, to move, yes. I am clicking. So try on this. now. So try now. Let's see. Ativar. Okay. Make a diff. New share. No, you still didn't move it. We don't see it. Okay. Well, let's see if I can make it in a different way here. So why don't you click this? It is writing on your language. Atavar. Click on that. No, I, I just cannot see. Uh, oh, you don't stream. see it. We see it. Yeah. Uh, you don't see. It is, it is under the toolbar. It's, I will try to. When you open the presentation, we see it. Ah, you don't see your screen. Uh, that is a problem. So you cannot move it if you don't see it. So please, if okay, you cannot, you can continue. Again. You can continue on, on that way. Okay. okay, go, go, go. Up with the mouse. Go up. Yes. Uh, little yes. down. Yes. Here. <laughs> little down yeah. and the okay. left. We cannot yes, all... okay. You can continue on that way. We cannot help you now if you don't see. Okay. Well, I don't know what is happening today. Um I am proceeding just like I have proceeded before. Let's see if I can make it happen again. Okay, I will try to share my screen. And I will try to make uh, 
alternate screen files, maps. Okay, let's try to do this. Share. Okay, so let's go here. Okay. And uh, okay. Now, can you, now you're able to see it? Uh, we see it, but not in a full mode. We are able to see it. Perfectly. Now it will come. It is coming. Yes, you click. Yes, now it is great. You can do it. <laughs> yes. Now it Thank is. You, thank you very much for your patience. And sometimes this happens with the technology, you know. I was just proceeding like the other meetings that we had, but uh, we had a small problem. So let's try to start this conversation about driving sustainable progress with carbon pricing. Uh, I am Professor Dr. Uh, Joseph Luis Esteves. I believe I will be able to escape all this stuff because I have been really well introduced by our team at uh, IU and G20. Um, I uh, got the opportunity here to talk again about a very important subject and matter in, in terms of uh, finance and economy globally. I would like always to make a bridge, uh, a real uh, uh, a bridge with the SDG4, that is uh, quality education. And I'm proudly uh, uh, received the honor to be uh, considered one of the chairs by GSFN, that is a, a network, a supporting network for this gathering also today. So thank you very much. And then I will start just like uh, the couple of, uh, my last uh, presentations here uh, with an image that I like the most because I do really believe that it represents very um, with a particular, you know, uh, sense of humor, uh, something that was tragical because I am, for those that cannot see on an appropriate way, um, showcasing the image of our planet art, our mother art wearing a face mask, probably a reality that was so common during especially the hard, hardest time of our COVID-19 pandemic. So the, uh, the past three years that we have faced this global uh, pandemic that started in a small city called Wuhan in China, in the beginning of the year 2020 and from there spread out around the globe. In terms of education, as I like to pinpoint uh, in every presentation that I do, probably the education sector was the second most affected because you know, with the exception of the health sector where we all we had all professionals uh, you know, coming to the front line to the, to the battle front of uh, COVID-19, the education sector probably suffered the most because we had, according to UNESCO, around 1.5 billion students outside the classroom for a period of almost two years. So this is something that we have to ask ourselves, the future arrived and brought us a hard impact in terms of the global society. Of course, I will be able to talk a little bit more about what is going on or, or to uh, give you an expectation to build some uh, possible reliable scenario uh, in terms of what's going on here in Brazil uh, that is a continental country, but also in Latin America and in our uh, Latin American Caribbean region. But uh, no matter uh, if we're talking about Latin America, if you're talking about uh, you know Europe or Asia, if you're talking about uh, Middle East, uh, it, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic launched a new uh, wave of uh, possibilities that we will have to accomplish in order to change uh, our behavior and, and help to achieve a more sustainable future. So uh, this is something that I would like to uh, make also as an, uh, a, a possible connection. Uh, it is like, uh, you know, a network of words that we have uh, that sounds so familiar. And uh, no matter if we are talking about economy, no matter if we are talking about environment. So the involving landscape of international taxation will uh, uh, make us to navigate 
into the complexities of international taxation as something that is crucial for global business indeed. Um, well, uh, if we move ahead a little bit, we will uh, uh, probably foresee that the challenges and opportunities that arise in cross-border transactions are from this moment that we have started this pandemic in the year 2020, mostly, but uh, now in this year 2023, that is the first year that we are uh, considering uh, worldwide as a post-pandemic year, because we have a very effective control about the COVID-19 pandemic itself, uh, the uh, um, uh, transactions are emphasizing the need for tax certainty, especially to foster a stable and transparent, more transparent business environment. Of course, when we talk about transparent business environment, we put in place a word that was so familiar in the past 10 years that is compliance. But uh, what was designed in the, in the first, in the initial period of the compliance was the aspects of the compliance is driving the business uh, in terms of uh, financial stability. And now we have to foresee and to add some spice, like I, I, I used to say, uh, to uh, see compliance as another dimension that has to uh, bring, especially the, all the aspects that are related to climate change and the impacts that we have in, in the environment. Uh, according to some scientists and very important researchers we have uh, around the globe, uh, probably, maybe, we could be, you know, dangerously approaching the point of no return. It means that we have to address you know, framework like uh, conscious consumption, uh, five R's, uh, you know, in order to um, put a step back in the way we are um, consuming today and to skip this, uh, the possibility of achieving this point of no return. Well, well every effort that we will be uh, uh, making in the, in the coming future will no longer be, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, will, it will be no uh, uh, longer uh, make us to achieve a, a more sustainable future just the way we imagine to. So if we go for uh, it, it's really uh, uh, necessary to uh, point out that tax certainty uh, is a way to foster clarity and confidence, as I, I like to say, because certainty in taxation is uh, uh, on a on a key aspect, essential for business individuals alike, and offers uh, uh, um, uh, the certainty that offers a, a clear tax obligation, promoting confidence and compliance, just I have said um, some minutes ago. So we will be uh, dealing with a new compliance, let's say, perspective uh, globally, and that's why is so important to bring this uh, tax certainty uh, to uh, you know uh, present discussion today. It is necessary to bring the certainty to support cross-border investments and to especially reduce legal uncertainties. This is some. Uh, 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 this is a really a key point that I would like to highlight the most. Well, uh, if we talk about carbon pricing, uh, um, we, we we can. Uh, um, uh, summarize uh, when sim and simplify uh, by going as an innovative approach to climate change, because carbon pricing shall be addressed as a proactive strategy, especially, especially not only, but especially to combat uh, climate change. Uh, and the carbon pricing, uh, the concept of internalizing external carbon costs would be probably a key in my perception a key driver to boost sustainable practice, to encourage business to adopt a greener technology. And if this is the case, and if it is, is the track we all are uh, trying to achieve, and probably we will be able to, as our dear fellow Dr. Renuka Takor from the United Kingdom uh, tell us every time, 
in a global sustainable future to network to achieve our most desired sustainable future. Uh, and we are talking when we put uh, you know the uh, in place uh, on um, not only uh, uh, not private e economy uh, perspective, the integration of tax certainty and carbon pricing probably will unlock the synergy between taxation and environmental sustainability in order to enhance the effectiveness of carbon price initiatives. And with this, uh, to connect it together, drive economic growth. And I'm not all, only talking about what is going on in terms of the global economy, but of course I'm talking about uh, especially uh, the climate change agenda that we will we'll have to address urgently to put our uh, dots in connection and in place. Um, uh, of course, to embrace a greener future, will demand global cooperation. Uh, we are not uh, in a perspective to uh, foresee in the coming future things in the uh, different uh, broad of dimensions like we have been discussing this uh, Sunday's gathering here in our network. Like I used to say, uh, our mind gathering of the Sundays. Uh, we cannot go further thinking at the same way, in the same point that we were back in the year, in the bottom uh, end of the year 2019, and uh, the beginning of the year 2020, where uh, we had this uh, glo uh, global COVID-19 pandemic uh, kicking off. So governments, international bodies, industries, they shall collaborate to streamline tax regulations and to align specifically financial ob objectives with sustainable practices. It will be no longer a matter of what I do to achieve a more sustainable economy with Brazil, what I will do to achieve a more sustainable economy with US or with a country in Europe or in Asia, uh, in the Middle East. And no, uh, this is something that we will have to put in place and connect the dots together. So why unlock economy growth through sustainability? Because we must trigger innovation and sustainable practices as a, a direct result business that will leverage their opportunities for growth. Uh, we are, are talking about a dissemination of practices in terms of uh, uh, you know, a business worldwide uh, that is exponentially increasing uh, with the uh, discussion of the open innovation and an assorted range of uh, possibilities that was, uh, you know, uh, brought to us in these uh, after pandemic time, just like, for, for example, the AI, the artificial intelligence and, 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 and the gener generative intelligence uh, systems that were put in place also to drive the organization's growth. So, uh, this is something that we have to pay uh, attention to and, and probably uh, to use it as a boost in our, uh, you know, way to think ahead and to drive or to establish what would be uh, the key drivers to achieve this sustainable future uh, altogether at the same time. Um, uh, of the issues... If we talk about carbon markets in Latin America to make a brief uh, highlight uh, of the issues discussed at the COP26, the carbon market is drawing the most attention in the region, just that I have uh, you know, highlighted in the beginning of my speech, and mainly for one clear reason. Latin America and Caribbean can position themselves as the world largest providers of carbon credits. This is, of course, something that is uh, really easy to understand with the map, with a, with a, uh, you know, a drafted map of the location of existing emerging and considered carbon pricing instruments. So there are a, a bunch of nations that you know, are trying to position in, in this uh, carbon market uh, uh, world uh, in order to develop uh, what will be uh, probably a new uh, key driver for economic growth 
uh, in our countries. Uh, and, though, and so that's why I would like to highlight into detached Latin America and this portion. Uh, this is something because uh, uh, Latin America carbon black market attained the value of almost uh, 500 uh, millions in the year 2021. And the regional market is project to grow at the uh, rate of 5.8, almost 6% between 23, the year that we, we, we are uh, now, and the year 2028. So uh, there is a, a very huge uh, growth perspective in terms of carbon credits and the carbon markets in Latin America. And, and the fact that if we become to be, if we became in the, in the coming future, uh, you know, the principal providers of these uh, credits, uh, uh, the position of the world economies may change a, a very, very, in, in, a perspective, in a perspective that we have never saw before. So uh, this is something that we have to keep an eye open to. Um, and uh, 68 CPIs, were uh, enforced worldwide. Car uh, CPI is a carbon pricing instrument covering 20.5%, uh, 20.5% uh, uh, of global emissions. There are 36 carbon taxes and 32 emission trading systems in place at this uh, particular moment in the year 2023. In the Latin American region, uh, Chile, uh, Colombia, Mexico, and Argentina are front runners in this process, along uh, with Brazil, of course. And I would like also to uh, make a, a more concise, uh, uh, um, you know, point with this deep dive that I'm I'm trying to do here in terms of carbon marketing, addressing uh, the position of Latin America. As similarly, Argentina and Brazil are at capitalizing the momentum and have begun improving their carbon pricing instruments, despite of the fact that, as you all probably know, we uh, are dealing with very different economic situations and momentums. Uh, Brazil on the top and running up to the top, Argentina with serious economic uh, problems arising at the same time. But you know, it could be probably a strategic uh, thought of the Argentinians to address this uh, question of the carbon market in, in Latin America and try to you know re reposition the way she will be, she will uh, be uh, the country will be possible uh, contributing with this in this coming future. Uh, in total, uh, almost six percent of the uh, you know. GHG emissions in Brazil are subject to a positive net effective carbon rate of, or uh, ECR, uh, as we know, in the year 2020 to uh, 21. And uh, this is something really interesting because everything that is uh, related to uh, GHG emission was unchanged uh, back at, in, into the year 2000 up to the year 2000 uh, or down to the year 2018. So Brazil ratified the Paris Agreement in 2016 uh, with ambitions commitment to reduce its uh, GHG emissions by uh, 37%. Uh, it is really an incredible number to put on, on the center of the table until the year to, to, uh, 25, 2025 and 43% up to the year 2013. So below uh, 2005 levels by increasing the share of sustainable biofuels in the energy mix to around 18%, making renewables, excluding of course, hydropower 45% of the energy sources by the year 2020, uh, th uh, 2030, and uh, uh, mostly restoring and reforesting 12 million, million hectares of forests, restoring 50 million of hectares of degraded pasture lands and enhancing about 5 million hectares of integrated cropland livestock forestry. So this is an ambitious, a very ambitious plan that we have conceived and uh, drive as a, you know, a goal in the COP26, uh, but uh, this is uh, something that is uh, achievable 
And, and if we uh, uh, get there, probably we are talking about Brazil as a, a key uh, carbon market player in this very uh, you know, upcoming moment in time. Uh, global cooperation and the global ahead. Uh, navigating the road ahead we require, as, uh, as we can imagine, especially in this uh, after pandemic, uh, deep and refined understanding, like I, I like to say, of international collaboration. And the global impact of tax certainty and carbon pricing will connect, in my humble opinion, the dots or may connect the dots between the importance of cross-border cooperation and how collective efforts can shape a more sustainable world. Uh, and this is a, in the, the, a, a fact very clear because we all must show, <laughs> you know, urge to embrace a certain equitable and sustainable future. We need to embrace a holistic approach towards a more comprehensive understand of how tax certainty and carbon pricing are redefining, especially redefining international and the subject of international uh, taxation. So we are to discover the potential of a brighter future through this global unity that I am pursuing here in this uh, Sunday morning for a sustainable world. Um, there are some conclusions uh, uh, coming to an end, of course, but uh, certainly we have a lot to talk about first in, in this subject. Uh, one of them is the concept of the tax certainty in progress with carbon pricing is, at, is really a dynamic force that will transcend borders, foster collaboration between nations and all kinds of industries. Uh, second one, by embracing this approach, we uh, not only address the pressing challenges of taxation and environmental sustainability, but we also at the same time unlock the potential for economic growth and global cooperation. This is something that is uh, like a Bible uh, in my hands every time that I am you know, asked to talk about what do you uh, foresee as a possible economic uh, and sustainable dimension uh, in financial markets worldwide and globally, I say we will have to look uh, closely uh, the issue and the challenges of taxation and bring them at, uh, as uh, you know uh, a new a key driver to uphold our sustainability cha challenges too. And as uh, we uh, navigate the intricate web of international taxation, the nexus with carbon pricing paves the way for a more certain, equitable, and sustainable future. Uh, our, uh, I would like to thank you very much for your kind patience to uh, listen what I, I bring here up to this table. Uh, uh, I have also written uh, a small test, uh, and I probably will finish an article, and I will uh, bring uh, G20 and IIU uh, to this uh umbrella of this, uh, the umbrella of this article too. Uh, uh, we have, we are here at Exponentialis. Exponentialis is a platform uh, of uh, change making education. Uh, it's a net tech. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a company, a startup that we have founded in the year 2019. And uh, we are trying to connect all these dots in terms of, uh, you know, especially to mitigate the gap between public and private education systems and learning here in Brazil, but also uh, to provide reliable information in other subjects that are related to education worldwide. So our training, advisory, and research service are at your hands. I thank you very much. I thank you all those persons that are uh, probably at this uh, very moment, you know, uh, awake to and and listening and watching what we have in our channels, like we have in YouTube, a live streaming right now. These are some of my contacts, so you can uh, you know uh, follow me and you can contact me anytime. I'll be more than happy to uh, share my thoughts and uh, reflect with you on this subject and in other subjects that I hopefully will have the chance to experience. Uh, discuss here 
in this uh, bright network with you. Tell, thank you very much again and a warm, uh, really warm greeting from Brazil to you all. So I will now stop sharing and um, bring back to my live mode. And hopefully I uh, got enough attention to bring this subject to a coming discussion in, the, in this uh, future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, that was quite informative as such. It was a very comprehensive presentation. That was, that's what I would say. That starting from the carbon prints and relating it to the entrepreneurship and also about the finance challenges that you have addressed it, though you addressed it from the country of Brazil, I think it had some global influence as well. So adding on to it, definitely, I think we should agree on the fact that in practice, Essentially, every country taxes active business income deemed uh, sourced from within and uh, provided that an activity giving rise to the income is sufficiently and closely linked to the country's economy and the standards of the current inter, uh, international architecture, finance architecture, sorry, the word finance, I just missed, that's a very vital word there. So this typically requires a degree of physical presence, you know, and uh, in the world of commodities and also the physical goods in the pro-digital age. And this is so-called the permanent establishment, or uh, otherwise they called it as, uh, they just name it as, term it as nexus concept. Hope people will agree with me that the legal incorporation in every country, not only Brazil, but across the globe, Normally the world constitutes this and as a world of physical business locations uh, contribute a vital um, thing as a influence or the catalyst uh, in talking about the degrees of activities and also the other activities, entrepreneurship and the business finance, which is involved therein. Thank you so much, Professor. That was quite informative and uh, moving ahead. Can we have the next speaker on board, please? Madam, over to Madam Sandhya Banerjee. Thank you so much. You're muted, Ms. Madam Sandhya, please. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so our next pointer is to talk about base erosion and profit shifting. So basically this concept means it refers to a set of tax planning strategies that are used by many multinational corporations to exploit the gaps and mismatch in tax rules between different countries. So the goal of BEPS or base erosion and profit shifting is to minimize the taxes a company pays by shifting from high tax jurisdictions to low tax or tax free jurisdiction, often where little or no business activity takes place. Some of uh, this concept, uh, an aspect of this concept that helps attaining certain SDGs can be to address uh, reduced inequality, to bring in peace, justice, and uh, strong institutions, to bring in partnership for the goals, and also decent work and economic growth. So uh, by uh, it also addresses the no poverty goal event uh, consequently. And uh, yes, to talk about this in more detail, we have with us Dr. B. Suchitra, who is part of IGEN. She has received a management doctorate from Madras University and currently the Dean of Events and Associate Professor in Management at Dr. MGR Educational and Research Institute. And her passion being a soft skill trainer is to counsel and motivate students to achieve their goals. So she's published 10 publications in Scopus and also published two or three book chapters. She's received the best teacher award in the year 2016 and 2018. And she's a person of, uh, she's a research oriented person and she's appeared as guest in seminars and as a guest lecturer in workshops and FDPS. We welcome you to this evening, ma'am, to share your inputs on base erosion and profit shifting. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good evening, all. Good evening. I think you can see my screen. 
Ma'am, can you be a little louder? Ma'am, can you see my screen? Uh, you have not shared the screen yet. No, we don't see and we don't hear you good also. Your mic, your voice, something is not good. Are you trying to share? Yes, ma'am, I'm trying to share. Okay. Ma'am, I'll share it for you. Ah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear my voice? Le let oh, it's better. Let it's better. better. One second. Ah. But you have to be a little louder, ma'am, please. Your yes, voice is very feeble. Yes. I'm trying to share it. Yes. Dr. Suchitra, can we hear you again? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you hear my voice? Is it, it, is it, is, it is better. It is better. Okay. Yes, it is better. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to share the screen now. Yes, ma'am. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Hope it's loading. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. I am Suchitra Dean Evans, and uh, I'm working in uh, MGR Educational Research University. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss about base erosion and uh, profit uh, shifting. See, why this particular concept is, ma'am, uh, I can't, uh, you have to uh, move the slide, it seems, as you have shared. Ah, yes. See, base erosion is the concept. Uh, I'm audible. You are audible, ma'am? Yes, you are. Ah, yes, thank you so much. Uh, base erosion and profit uh, shifting, why this particular concept has introduced us, uh, there should be some tax uh, rules, regulations should be, is mismatching. To avoid this mismatching, uh, this particular concept was uh, framed and uh, this avoiding strategy is done mainly in multinational companies. So why this particular concept is uh, n number of multinational companies have started in so many countries. So to exploit the gaps and mis mismatches in tax rules, uh, this BEPS, that is Base Erosion Profit Shifting, has done. Second slide, ma'am, please. And uh, you have this profit sharing, uh, different profit sharing in uh, BEPS, that is transfer mispricing. Uh, we have to know what transfer mispricing means manipulating or fraud transfer pricing. First concept is manipulating. Manipulating means uh, mismatches in your uh, taxes and some uh, irrelevant documents the multinational companies will be providing. To avoid that, this transfer mispricing is the first concept we have implemented. And second is DTAA. DTAA means double taxation avoid agreement. See, I'm a person who is paying tax and I'm dealing with different companies. Even they will also pay the tax. Why this is occurring by double payment is the information is not transparent. That is the main reason uh, which we are in, in transparency of your information. Next is treaty shopping. Treaty shopping means individuals indirectly paying. They won't have any uh, direct payment. Uh, we can't guess for what sake they have paid this taxes. Actually, that is the reason we created this BEPS to know, to have the transparency, to know the transaction for all the sponsor we have done. And inflating invoice. For inflating invoice means modifying the inflation. You're going to totally uh, manipulate your uh, taxes. It is totally, you have to give irrelevant information. They are doing this. Why means multinational companies will be earning more profit, but they will hide so many informations and they will, they will give you the fake detail. That is the reason inflating invoice. And binami transaction. 
see uh, big legends and big businessmen and all, we know that everyone will have properties, the countless properties. For in their name, it is their means definitely you have to pay tax for the government to avoid that some trustworthy person or a legal person, legally approved person, they used to have the name transaction. That is the only reason. And next is your round tripping. Round tripping means one company. For example, I'm a person who is going to uh, get the product or property for around 10 lakhs. And uh, after two years, in the year 2016, I am selling the property to another person in amount of 10 lakhs. And I'm after 2018, I'm getting back the same property in my name, the same amount without any interest or without paying any tax. This is one way of modification, which we are doing, which the countries are doing for what sake is the only thing is to avoid the taxation to avoid all this taxation only the transparent information should be there that is the only concept BEPS module second slide ma'am and uh, next is backdrop backdrop is the concept uh, next ma'am next uh, backdrop is the concept OCED OCED means organization for uh, economic cooperation and development uh, why BEPS is introduced is in the year of 2008, we faced a financial crisis. So when we are facing financial crisis only, we came to know that the multinational companies are uh, doing this irrelevant uh, documents, uh, framing this irrelevant information. So that is the only reason we are doing it. So G G20 as launched in the year 20, uh, 2002, the finance minister of G20 has launched this and it was action planned delivered to G20 in the year 2013. In the year 2014, developing countries, they focused on this tax avoidance. So slowly they were started adopting it, but not fully, slowly they have started. In the year 2015, G20 finance minister discussed and they framed a report. So we know that whatever new initiative we are doing, it might take uh, years and months to rectify it and sort out it. So slowly they have started implementing. And 2016, the final report of the OECD uh, laid down the project and they have started 15 points. They have started implementing this 15 points. Next slide, ma'am, please. And the G, uh, after implementing, next month, now, after implementing only, they came to know that uh, why it matters, why we are in need of this concept. The company should have the transparency. They're mainly concentrating that only. We know that that is not possible. Transparency, giving all the information transparency is not possible. But at least 20% uh, or 30%, we can have the transparency to avoid this crisis. So we decided the BEPS plan to have multinationals uh, without transparency. Many transactions have been done. So they are fighting for the transparency. That is the only motive. Next slide, mom, please. Next, uh, this OCED, that is, uh, they have planned five strategies, uh, how to uh, sort out categories. They have categorized into five. So action plan done by BEPS. First is industry specification. First, we have to know the what is the industry specification. It is there. After knowing the specification only, we can list out how challenges are there in digital economy. And next is your execution. It is not that only industry, industry specification alone, we should know that. Next, we have to think about the challenges. So executing the challenges. It is tough to implement it drastically, but slowly we can move forward. And third concept is transparency and certainty. So transparent information is there and certainty also will be there. So once if you are making use to have this transfer pricing documentation, making dispute resolutions more effectively. We are unable to hear you, ma'am.
yes next slide uh, this is comes under your coherence coherence means consistent performance is needed so we have to think about it and next next slide mom please yes next so we were thinking about BEPs that they have framed 14 points, action plans they have planned. So addressing tax challenges, first plan is you have to accept the challenges what we are facing it on the digital economy. So if you're not able to know the challenges, we are not able to move forward it. Second is neutralizing the effects, how mismatch arrangements are done. So we have to know the mismatches which is relevant which is relevant and which is not relevant action plan three is controlled foreign companies so we are having tie up with foreign companies so we have to think about it how far they are Im implementing the strategy action four is about interest deduction and other financing payment uh, where we can deduct the amount and how far we can make the payments in a proper channel fifth plan is about harmful tax pay more effectively harmful tax practice are being done by different countries. So we have to know how to rectify it. Sixth is preventing the granting. So we are uh, countries are just like that, they are uh, granting. So if we have stick on that and we started using that, means definitely it will happen. And seventh is preventing the artificial avoidance, permanent establishment status. Initially, we might be trying for step by step. And uh, seventh plan is totally we have to streamline it and eighth is about transfer pricing outcome and value creation once you have given the outcome if that some changes are there definitely you can do it and 11th one is about uh, measuring and monitoring the eps we started implementing and we have to monitor how far this BEPS is followed and mandatory rules should be framed. Tax pricing documentation is needed. Uh, whatever physical uh, or evident is there is documentation. Documentation is the only concept which gives for country to country report and uh, making dispute resolution. Last one is developing a multilateral instrument to modify the bilateral taxes treaties. Next slide, ma'am, please. See, why this action is done means slowly they want to make everyone to implement this action. Uh, if we countries started implementing this action means definitely we can uh, move forward and implement this BEPS action. Uh, ma'am, next slide, please. So we different countries, uh, we have seen that implementing uh, different companies uh, which have seen as implementing is uh, status Australia has implemented this BEPS and Brazil has started implementing, China has started implementing, Singapore has started implementing and uh, United Kingdom. So this particular uh, countries have started implementing this BEPS slowly. And uh, what the drawback in this VEP is, is we can't get the current data. It is it is lagging there. So in the year of 2023, uh, what are the latest updates? Mainly, still we are lagging in getting the uh, information from the persons. So at last, what we thought is uh, we want to have some conclusion by implementing this particular concept. Is we have to have government must uh, take initiative in implementing. to avoid this erosion. So once we are thinking of your profit shifting means we have to have a strong base in base erosion which were, which should be implemented by the government. And uh, thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Thank you all. So this is my last uh, members of the o OECD, uh, which is started recently in uh, June 2023. They have given this option. These are the members, they are utilizing this OECD. 
and last is the conclusion is business operates internationally so government must uh, act together to tackle this waste and uh, resort trust in domestic and international tax system so it is mandatory only in the hands of uh, government over 135 countries are started implementing only 15 actions they have framed it to tackle this tax avoidance. We have to improve this international rules and regulations to ensure that transparent information should be there. At the end, what is the conclusion means uh, by implementing this BEPS, we came to know that uh, we have to have this transparency in your information. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the detailed presentation, but in a very crisp manner for all of us to understand the uh, BEPS and its impact on different countries and how we should move forward. Like uh, you have already mentioned, transparency is the key. Uh, we have with us our next speaker who is going to speak on transparency, uh, Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for uh, Tax Purposes. And uh, that is again led by OECD, and it fosters international cooperation to combat tax evasion. So uh, this collective effort shall enhance global tax compliance and curb illicit financial activities and support fair revenue distribution. So, so to speak about this, we have with us Mr. Balaji Krishnan, who is the managing partner of Rangamani Associates Chartered Accountant, which is headquartered in Kotem with branches in seven different locations across Kerala. He is a chartered accountant with over two decades of valuable experience. And uh, his work, uh, has, uh, professional in his professional journey, he has worked uh, across uh, UAE, Qatar, and Switzerland. He's also the member of uh, the Chartered Accountants Body of uh, Australia. He's also the current chairman of the Kotem uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of uh, India. And uh, most of all the important part of the introduction, he's my better half and I proudly welcome him. Apart from sharing our life, we are also sharing the digital space. Malaji, the digital space is all yours. Thank you, Sandhya, for the lovely introduction. And good evening to all the stalwarts who are present. Dr. Jose, Mr. Chitra, Madam, Ms. Divya is there, Mr. Inga, then uh, Sri Vidya, Madam, then people to follow, like Gustavo, all that. Thank you very much. And uh, we need to understand a few things. Uh, it was said that there are two things that are very certain in life. One is debt, and uh, equally certain is the tax part of it. So the taxes are the ones which make people grow in a sustainable, in a socially equitable manner. More development should mean that more taxes are collected and the inequalities in life is balanced by the device that the government uses through collection of tax from people and then distributing through the developments. SDG plays a key role in terms of how a tax is structured. But given that uh, we have seen how people are getting smart by trying to jump the fence or redefining the uh, loopholes and ensuring that more and more money is withheld than uh, paid to the exchequer in the form of taxes. So the endeavor for the evening is to see what actions are proposed and uh, what are the ways in which the government across have uh, decided to put a plug to these systems. So uh, if uh, I, I know it, it's not in fairness of things to make a presentation through using the website, but then it would be plagiarism if I were to just pull out what is there in the OECD website. There is nothing more to say or the way it has been uh, properly captured there. So I would please allow me to share the screen. Inga, can I request you to check? Yeah. Yeah. Can Can you see this now? Is the screen visible? Yeah. All right. Yes. So, so there, there we are. So uh, we're talking about we saw so many things. BEPS actions. Now we are in this part, the tax transparency. So if you look at it, it's all about uh, putting beautifully put the 
in fact the guy who he made this statement should be paid uh, for the best punchline like adidas says impossible is nothing so it talks about the same like the tax transparency is about putting an end to bank secrecy and tax evasion through global tax cooperation the moment you find that countries one multinational is operating two different countries and if the government is silent or not very clear as to where the money should be taxed naturally the tendency like water should be to flow to the lower end thereby causing much harm if i operate in india i make most of my profit then it's very natural that i pay the taxes in india and shift the profit to the other side so the beps action relating to tax uh, beps action will be effective only if this global cooperation is properly understood so there is a small video there so this is the key part there are two parts of it exchange of information on request and then automatic exchange so we just see a short video on this i think you need to share sound if it is required no i just stop uh, i have shared the sound was it not audible was it audible no it's not audible oh okay so this this is a key part of it i mean the sound part is just a background see this is the key part oecd has helped dismantle the tax havens where rich and powerful have hidden their wealth and got around paying taxes so this was by and large achieved because there was a proper transparency between the countries through which trade takes place to ensure that tax is not allowed to be hidden in the form of some secret bank accounts so we just so this is the key part why do you want uh, why do the government should have uh, proper tie otherwise what will happen is over a period of time government will lose revenue because it without understanding abet tax evasion which should never be permitted we can plan for the taxes to be paid at a lower level but then we cannot permit tax evasion by preying on to the susceptibilities of the lack of proper structure which could be there in a government it's not a fair practice so what we are talking about is fair practice and at times fair practices need to be ensured it is just like wearing a uniform to the school everyone knows that children go to the school but then by wearing a uniform you are ensuring that it's made very clear that the intention of the student is to go to the school so also for the schools to understand that uh, they have only the pupil who are studying in the school who come to the school so this is the key part what otherwise they would lose if they don't have that money then they will not be able to spend on public safety infrastructure health care which is very very important this is one of the most important sdg goals and by far the best education if you are not having enough money because you sit silently and allow the corporates to take the money stashed in some other countries then you will never be able to provide education to your own uh, people so just to show that the perspective for on which this tax transparency thing was mooted see this is the key development you can see that this is the first time this was established in 1971 see it's it's not something new we have seen that over the years for example in india the tax rate was as high as 90% so maybe there were some attempts to take this away so it you can see that this has been going on for the last 52 years and let's see how successful they are now you can see that there are over 160 members so one of the key reasons why we are talking now is united arab emirates have embraced corporate tax that's basically because of the commitment they had on oecd and also part of uh, they are already part of this from 2000 we will see the countries which are part of this so you can see that this global forum on transparency and exchange of information for tax purpose is basically built around the world and i would say that this is more cohesive there are less political reasons to be involved here the way the steam works there is a concept called tax inspectors without jurisdiction and that's welcome by everyone across the globe you need to see that each country deserves its lion's share in the economic progress made by multinational in that country so you can see that there have been conventions on 
mutual administrative assistance in tax matters. It has to be similar. You're talking about a global practice where the basic structure of tax remains the same. And we have those 15% minimum tax prescribed as corporate tax, which is also going to be discussed in the future part of this. So this is the key part. We can see that there is an automatic exchange of in tax information. So you can see that covers more than 100 tax jurisdictions with information on 84 million financial accounts with a total euro of 10 trillion. That's, that's a huge amount of money and then information that, it, that is getting exchanged. So this is as of 2019. So you can see that we have progressed another four years, but then we will see how interesting it is. This, there is a peer review done. That peer review, this, this also was discussed by uh, Suchitra, madam. There is this country by country exchange. We need to understand how a corporate functions in terms of how they've made profits in each of the countries. If they're booking less profit in higher tax jurisdiction and lower profit in lower tax jurisdiction, then through this exchange of information that multinational gets caught. So there are other parameters as well, like residence by citizenship, by investment. For example, a country like Singapore welcomes people to become their citizen by investing. But then that should not be used as a cue for somebody to evade tax in another country. We want everyone to come and settle as good, normal, law-abiding citizens. There, there are indicators which give a clear view. What are the parameters on which uh, each of the country is supposed to work? So. You can see that this automatic information, there are common reporting standards, framework under which this common reporting standards work, then common reporting standards, implementation and assistance. That requires a little bit of digging. So you can see that this is how the whole thing works. If someone is familiar with uh, multi-jurisdictional taxation advice given, then everyone is looking for tax identification numbers. Because if I were to certify for the financial transaction of a US resident, I would definitely want to get the tax residency certificate from that person and also get a STIN. So these key ingredients, these are all implemented based on the BEPS action plan and especially the exchange of information put in place by OECD. So if this is all, then this is, this is not all. They're, they are also having a monitoring progress. So they need to, if this is the law as a basis, basic principle, keeps evolving and whenever the law evolves, the OECD team in the automatic exchange pros, they keep updating what are the key ingredients which needs to be updated. Now we are looking in the digital world, which is very, very complicated. How do I find out which country should collect tax for a sale of software, whether it is in the country in which it was created or in the country it was used or in both the places. If it's in both the places, how all of this should be distributed. So. For this information and a proper law to be involved, exchange of information on an automatic basis is considered very, very vital by OECD. So you can see that this Oslo Convention, this was the first time they talked about tax and crime. So it was, and interestingly, there is a movie called Untouchables where the dreaded uh, Al Capone who was a gangster of the 1930s. He was nabbed and put behind bars because he did not file his tax return in time. There was no other reason for that to be brought behind bars or brought to the good side of the law. So I am saying that in the Oslo dialogue, they tackle tax crimes and also define what are the financial crimes. So see, this, this part really captures the essence of the whole thing. Countering these activities requires greater transparency more effective intelligence gathering and analysis and improvements in cooperation and information sharing between government agencies and between countries to prevent, I repeat, it is basically to prevent and if somebody jumps the bar, then detect and then what happens to and prosecute criminals and recover proceeds of their illicit activities. See, this is how strongly they have made the whole exercise. If somebody wants to jump or violate the law, they better be very careful because if I if they run from one country and then land in another country where there is a treaty, then there is not going to be much difficulty in extraditing that person. So all of this you will find here. So there is also this featured content. There is a peer review process, as I said, 
they review the activities done there is also standard exchange then this is this is what is uh, something more relevant for a country like india and also to see where we stand in the whole spectrum this you will see that this is a very comprehensive working that has been shared here we will very quickly go through a couple of things before uh, we switch to the other part i hope it's getting out okay, there it is in 2014 they sat around and understood that other than developing countries that do not host a financial center were invited to commit see they were invited to commit to come and say that we will also want to exchange information we will also collect information because without which the point and trying to make it in under the countries realize that if i as a country welcome people to come and settle here and pay lower taxes that is only a smaller faith if i do the wrong thing then another person will lower the rack and the whole thing will get eroded from my base that should not happen everywhere tax is basically required for ensuring that the sustainable development goal the larger four a plan of the united nations is a success if it has to be a success then taxes are very much required you can see that in this plenary session in 2016 encouraged all countries to take steps towards implementing this standard as soon as practicable that that was the urging which was done from their end it has to be done as soon as practic practical then they you can see that almost everyone welcomed this move, move and then ensured that information exchange became a very very regular activity so that nobody escapes the law just because he thinks that another country has a different law if i have failed to pay tax and i escape we can say for example boris becker and so hard to talk about boris as an example boris becker was jailed he had to be jailed and the entire assets were confiscated he virtually became bankrupt because his tax affairs were not properly done he fled from one country and then stayed in another country all of that happened only because of automatic exchange of information is available for the authorities so he also now repents the fact that he should have rather paid the tax and then gave a good example of himself rather than face the ignominy of being put behind bars on these matters so these are the couple of other things that you can say let us see this is the latest one latin american countries they have created a new process let's see what is the and they have understood that there are still margin for improvements in since this is as early as the 26th of june so you can see that they have understood that average this is the key part there has to be a basic average of tax to gdp unless that is maintained no country can make progress nearly than in names sake see you can see that their average tax gdp ratios it remains low in international comparison 20.7 whereas it is the oecd average is 34 so this parity to be achieved can be achieved only by ensuring that the information flow happens on a regular basis and that is why there is a compelling reason for more countries to step into this process and also increase the items to be exchanged for example in india the government has done a fantastic job by virtually capturing all the key financial transactions done by a person by linking everything to their bank not only that this is also shared the moment it is a non resident this information is put in this automatic exchange portal so that the country where he operates will also come to know that there is an asset base for this person in india another reason is in developed countries they give lot of support for the senior citizens and also people who have paid tax they gave great respect for people who have paid tax at one point of time and as the age progresses they want to support those elderly people but then assuming those elderly people is a billionaires having huge deposits in india that exchange of information back to a place like canada or usa will ensure that the individual contribution given to that particular individual will come down because he already has a wealth to fall back upon he doesn't require the entire government support so there is a social perspective there is an economic perspective moreover there is an overall global perspective involved in ensuring that the global tax information is done diligently not for the name sake for the reason that if there is an erosion that will ensure that the poor people who are supposed to get the benefit in terms of access to better hygiene health then infrastructure education all of this will get wiped away 
so this is the premise on which we had to come together and then discuss about it so by, this is a very vast topic per se even though it looks very small so i am just cutting short my presentation here in case there is any discussion on that we'll take the questions now or in the end i once again uh, repeatedly take this moment to say how nice sri vidya madam was in terms of uh, allowing a small towner like us to especially now it's become a family business so it's me and sandhya were very regular we are so elated and one more thing i also keep telling people that in india which is considered as a developing country the town that i belong to kottayam we achieved 100% literacy way back in the 80s now we are also one of the few districts in the entire country which has zero poverty so in fact all the sdg 20 goals sdg 20 everything has been properly captured in our district where we ensure that there is zero poverty in our district so i'm very very happy to sign off on that note and say that uh, we respect the united nations agenda and we are as diligent as a citizen that you can find in any other part of the globe that's the reason why we have very high public health standards and also access to education which has allowed us to become a zero poverty district thank you very much rividya madam dr jos and every one of you for the patient listening thank you very much thank you mr balaji i know i missed uh, some of your session because uh, uh, i presented for somebody and then i had uh, i had to really go out and then come back log in and uh, thanks for any uh, dr inga and um, <laughs> madam sandhya to take it forward thank you so much and uh, as uh, dr balaji uh, mr balaji was mentioning uh, <coughs> when we talk about taxation systems uh, is it territorial or worldwide both ways if you just look into it if it is territorial worldwide taxation system or visualized as opposite sides of the spectrum hope you will agree with me and the overwhelming majority of the countries uh, will fall somewhere in between these two you know whichever country it is nevertheless for the classification purposes the country we have a young champion we, we should pay thumping hand somebody who is sitting in the lap of Dr. Jos, welcome, welcome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nevertheless, the classification purpose: the countries with predominantly territorial taxation elements. Uh, for example, some type of foreign div dividends exemption system. He was he did mention it or categorized as territorial and countries with significant worldwide taxation elements. As you have been an analyzing it and giving it as a very broader uh, pictorial. i uh, think uh, when dr jos was mentioning he was talking about the, relating it to the brazil and when you related to the worldwide thing like that's what i talked about worldwide uh, taxation system within the mind uh, and uh, when the oecd member states have the territorial sixth, uh, system the pace of shift from the worldwide to the territorial system model has been significantly accelerating over the 30 years uh, that's what we should keep uh, i think uh, we should always keep a record and uh, we should move on further that on that note so moving ahead without taking much time it's our duty to invite uh, uh, the mr gustavo baisali i think I'm, i've just got his name right uh, you know like he was the first one to join us in in today's zoom session thank you for your patience sir we really really appreciate it and uh, it's a pleasure i'm i'm sure it's going to be a real pleasure having you with us amit sir today over to well, madam sir um, to welcome the speaker thank you uh can everybody hear me <laughs> yeah yes okay. yes 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 so would you well, give me a moment to uh, give a short introduction and welcome you sure so sure. yeah so as uh, balaji uh, spoke about no more evading taxes as world citizen with the digital era we don't know when a business is set up where to review the profit where to allocate the profit where can we call ourselves as a business how to tax digital services and what kind of establishment should an organization call itself and the there are much many uh, many more challenges adding to the digital era 
So to address these tax challenges, we have with us Professor Gustavo Alves, who is a, a professor from State University of West Parana. Uh, may we welcome you once again to the evening, sir, and uh, would like to have more information about yourself and your inputs on the challenges. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I am so glad to be here with you speaking today. Um, I am a political scientist. I have my PhD in, uh, from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. But uh, what I must say is that I am a teacher and I am passionate for teaching and to discussing ideas. Well, uh, my point here today is that OECD is doing a great job um, and some other uh, international institutions must, must clue on that job, I think. But uh, what we are seeing until now is that is the, um, is the real or the legal economy, okay? And I believe that we must take a look on the unseen, on what we are not seeing, and to discuss the possibilities of uh, international intelligence, of artificial intelligence, or any kind of... Um, or any kind of instruments to face it, okay? Uh, I have prepared some PowerPoint uh, on a research I am developing on counterfeit pesticides or illegal pesticides, just to just to clear up, just to clear something and to show some data that strength the um, stresses the lines of what I am saying. We must take a look on illegal and on the unseen when we are when we are talking about development and we are and when we are talking about environment. Okay, uh, just to show some data. What 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 are we talking about when? we are talking about illegal pesticides. Well, about 30% of the total trade in the world. That is an average because when we talk about United States, Europe and the North and some parts of the North hemisphere, we're talking about 20%. When we talk about Latin America, 30%. Africa and and the rest of the world, fifty percent of the total trade on pesticides came from illegal markets. Just to show you some numbers for Brazil, in for Brazil three years ago, we have about. Uh, 3.4 billion dollars lose in one year in one year and we are just talking about of what we are seeing of these unseen markets what's the impact of that and what should and which tools should we improve to look at the unseen well well, when we reach show health problems, skin cancer, breast cancer, premature birth, uh, lung cancer, and others. So we must we must look to um, spread the networks of what we are saying 
and take a closer data transfer and a closer data dialogue with health systems and with others, uh, with other institutions to have a clear, to have the problem more clear, to see, to face it as it really is. OECD is doing an important job in that sense, since it is, um, it is developing a good guidance practice and to um, in a guidance practice to establish the chain, to look at the chain of the legal completely. So it's doing about uh, OECD is talking about labeling, about uh, searching for the chain production, the chain transcript, uh, the transportation, and the market until the farmer. Okay. Well. That sounds nice, but what we should, but sh what should we do when we are talking non-members of OECD? For example, Brazil is a non-member of uh, of OECD. It's trying to become a member, but not an effective member yet. Mer uh, in Mercosur, uh, in Mercosur, we have no discussion about that. I believe that in Africa, I would like to hear some colleagues from Africa, but I believe we do not have any discussion about that also. So, uh, I believe that that we are facing, um, we are making great progress, but we are facing um, a problem with an institution that's multipolarized, multipolarized and um, with with uh, points or government points spread all over the world. That's something we should care about and we should um, think about. Let me show you some 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 points about the research I have been doing about it. Okay. Well, I have developed this research with Dr. Irene Carniato de Oliveira and Dr. Manuela Jaqueira here in Brazil. Well, another point I would like to stress is that the chain production and chain circulation of pesticides has almost the same structure of some drugs, most of them heroin and medicines. So what's the point? Produced in China and India, dealed with Middle Eastern countries or passing by Middle Eastern countries, coming to, coming to Ukraine, if they were spread in Europe and coming from Chile, if they were spread in South America. Okay. So what happens is that gangs often change from one illegal market to the other. For example, we are having now here in Brazil, uh, drug dealers that- Can like a slideshow sorry the screen sorry. is quite you have to make it like a slideshow if you just click on uh, slide four and I'm click sorry. on current slider you should be able to present it in a bigger way yeah is that okay now yes yes perfect thank okay. you thank you professor okay so uh what i'm saying is that 
drug gangs are now changing from um, markets. They become cigarette dealers and they are becoming pesticide dealers because drug dealers are enforced by the law. In almost all countries, drug dealers are somehow enforced by the law. Cigarette dealers, not really, okay? We have a huge problem here in Brazil with smuggled cigarettes, smuggled cigarettes because a huge problem for health systems because lung cancer. And we do not know yet, but we are trying to make some, some approaches to see what are the problem dealt with pesticides because drug gangs often change from one illegal one illegal thing to the other and as drug dealers are enforced by the law some of them are becoming pesticide dealers because police officers and uh, tax officers often do not take a close care about it another point concerning tax officers is that they are not often trained to recognize illegal pesticides what what they see when they look to the, to the packing is some white powder okay they did not know what to do with that they don't know what is inside and what is inside could be something really dangerous. Uh, I have a report from one technician here in Brazil that they found almost 30 products in just a small pack like this. So you can imagine it, uh, the impact on a health system and on environment. That is another thing that's not measured yet. We do not know how much the impact of the, in the environment costs. We, don't, we just know and we just can take a, a closer look to what the state is losing. And I said, yeah, in Brazil, um, in one year, 3.4 billion dollars. But we do not know how much is it spending on cancer treatment and other health treatments or in water treatment, soil, whatever. Well, uh, another point is that uh, illegal pesticides is a while, uh, uh, takes a wide range of things because we have smuggled pesticides, we have fake pesticides, bad labeled pesticides, and uh, I don't know how to say it in English, but kind of homemade pesticides okay um in brazil we have some some arrestments in the state of sao paulo about homemade pesticides just close to the to the better chemistry packages in the country as a way to to take profit of the um, of the labor force, of specialized labor force to produce illegal products, okay? Well, well, uh, OECD is facing this, as I said, to, as I said, producing a, a better a best practices guide and making all its members to adopt some 
some standards. But how can we spread it for other organisms and for other countries? I believe this is the challenge we must have now. Um, I have made some notes here I have. So, um, to set up some points and to um, stress some actions, maybe, what, what must we do? The amount must be noted. The amount of illegal pesticides and of illegal things must be noted. Exchanging information, yes, exchanging information. But most of all, creating a bond between tax and border agents. And that is a challenge because we are talking about institutions and persons and people that almost do not know each other and perhaps do not trust each other. Okay. Uh, so uh, when we talk about compliance, my dear Dr. Stavis, I believe we must open. The, I believe we must open the concept, talking about compliance, not only with entrepreneurs and with um, industries or companies, but we must talk about compliance, about with about and with governments. That's a, a key and hard point because now we are facing lots of political agents and lots of political systems that almost do not work closely or do not almost work together. On the contrary, they are prepared, they are designed to establish borders, to put walls in borders and try to, to put the enemy outside the borders. And we must turn upside down all this, uh, all this conception. We are facing a big challenge. We, we are facing a really big challenge. But I am a little bit skeptical and a little bit optimist with it. Skeptical because I do not believe that governments will change if we don't do anything. Governments will not change. Governments will try always to act as they always acted. But we are talking about youth. We are talking about climate change. We're talking about taxes. We are talking about change. So we must. We must express our voice to governments and to all the leaders and say, hey, we must act on a different way. We have the tools for that, or we have some tools for that. International artificial intelligence is one of them. Blockchain technologies are here to help us. Data exchange are powerful are powerful and some things are beginning to happen. Well, uh, I came glad, really, really, really glad a few days ago when uh, a former government, uh, a former government person was arrested uh, with some, with some jewelry on the bag, on the luggage. And what surprises me was the, was the way he was arrested. When he spot, when he has put his luggage to be carried out by, a, by an air company in the Middle East, they almost instantly informed the um, customs in Brazil, hey, this person is carrying out 25 kilos of luggage. And the customs said, oh, 
how much? 25 kilos of luggage. He left the country with 10 kilos of luggage. So what's on his luggage right now that it's more than the double than the original? And they took a look and they said, well, you're carrying some jewelry. You're carrying gold, you're carrying diamonds <laughs> and not a small, not a near ring, not a watch or something, but 13, 13 kilos. So just, just give us an explanation of what are you doing with this 13 kilos of drugs. That makes me a little bit more um, joyful and a little bit uh, with a little bit more hope in the technologies and in the exchange of knowledge and uh, in the initiatives like that uh, uh, International Internship University is doing to create bonds between people and institutions. That is to make globalization really works and works for everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Here have my two research groups where I'm in. The first in is the International Network on Resilience Climate Repair. And the second one is the lab on research, borders, state and social relationships. Okay, well, here you have my phone number, my email and Thank you so much one more time. Thank you, Mr. Gustavo. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, to be very frank, we have learned quite a lot of things from you today, which where we have, you have related to uh, the present scenario of the taxation with the threats. You know, it's we were till now we were talking only about the strengths of taxation, financial architecture, tax architecture with the terms of import, exports, territorial, world economy, so many things. But the actual threats to be dealt with. Uh, thanks for highlighting on those th threats which are involved in it. And definitely, I think uh, it will throw some light on certain parts that you mentioned, certain inferences that we are going to take from your presentation as such. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the taxation, definitely the tax on the environment, uh, we know that a progressive transition from zero greenhouse gas emissions by around the middle of the century is essential to the containing of the risk of the dangerous <clears throat> climatic change that you have mentioned, limiting the global warming to 1.52 degrees centigrade will require as a climatic policy packages that drive the transformative changes in production and the consumption patterns. Well, I think we, we definitely must, uh, think, yes, uh, yes, professor. I'll, I could share my, my slides on the WhatsApp group. Yeah, you can, you can. Okay. So with some policies which come up and we should have, a, we can apply an explicit price to the carbon emissions and the effect of treating and creating an implicit price with the policies, revised policies, mixing with the, depending on the country's specific economic circumstances with under the guidance of OECD. Talking on that note, the next topic is more related to it. We have related to the green finance. Green finance, as you know, is a sign of the world's economy, accelerating the transition away from the fossil fuel area. At its simplest, the green finance means any structured financial activity, that has been created to ensure a better environmental outcome and more a resilient future. To throw more light on it, we would request Madam Sandhya Balaji to invite Ms. Divya Somani. Thank you so much. Yeah. Over to Madam Sandhya. Thank you. Yeah, as uh, thank you, Dr. Vidya. As uh, you suggested, uh, to drive uh, to a sustainable uh, and uh, to give a sustainable solution for all the environmental challenges, green finance is the key word and it plays a crucial role. So uh, we all know what green finance is now. Uh, in case, for those who do not know, it means to 
address and uh, target resources, financial resources towards projects and in, uh, initiatives and businesses that have a positive uh, environmental impact. And uh, our target uh, through green finance is to have a low carbon economy, uh, uh, along with addressing uh, pressing issues such as climate change, bi biodiversity loss, and resource depletion. So today to speak on green finance, we have with us uh, Chartered Accountant, Ms. Divya Sumani from Ajmer, India. And she's an insolvency expert and she's a company secretary as well. She's a diploma in information systems audit. And to her credit, she has an IFRS from ACCA UK. She's also a certified concurrent auditor and a certified peer reviewer. And she's no new face to our G20. We welcome you once again, uh, Ms. Divya, and we look forward to your inputs on green finance. Thank you so much, Sanjana, ma'am, for such a warm welcome. And thank you, Shrividya, ma'am, for giving us the uh, giving me the opportunity again to deliver something on the very uh, crucial topic, which is green finance. See, today's session was very well uh, carved out, I would say. All the topics were very much relevant, and uh, just now we have heard about the actual threats which our environment is facing. And uh, sitting in a close, compact office or working area does not uh, let us know what are the real situation which we are facing nowadays. So our next generations need to have a sustainable future. And for that, uh, G20 is all about and every country must adhere to the policies of G20 related to that. So as you have already heard about the tax, the environment uh, related to carbon pricing, uh, BEPS, and the uh, various challenges related to tax and everything. Now it's my turn to take you uh, to the new topic, which is uh, green finance. See, the ultimate a uh, thing which is required to convert your dreams into realities. Basically, you must have some financial capacity to do so. Everything is possible if you have the capacity to do so. And in terms of uh, uh, making things possible, finance plays a very, very important role. So if you want to sustain uh, the future, you, you need to have some renewable uh, sources put into use. So how to use them, how to make them available to future generations is to be done by some researches or anything uh, like that. But for that, uh, we all need some or the other finance. So what is this green finance uh, relates to? Let me take you through the presentation and we will understand it. Uh, just let me know whether my uh, screen is visible. Not yet. It is visible. It is visible now. Okay, thank you. Can you put uh, up the screen, uh, please? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just okay. do this. Too. Okay. Yes. Just a second. Okay, so what is green finance? Uh, that is the topic about. And firstly, we should understand what is the uh, this picture telling us. It says that when you put some money in the environment, it grows in multiple times, basically. So environment is always there with us uh, from the very beginning. It was just that we did not care about it in recent past and uh, last uh, period, uh, decades or so. But again, it's time for us to showcase our uh, respect and our uh, love and uh, affection for that environment because it is the ultimate savior of the human generation. So let us understand what is green finance all about. Green finance refers to the financial products and services and initiatives that are specifically designed to support uh, the environmentally sustainable projects and activities. So whatever activity you are doing, and for that, if you need funds, uh, uh, those activities should relate to some uh, 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 renewable energy or the projects which leads to less carbon emitting uh, uh, projects, something like that, which leads to less pollution or in fact, no pollution at all. Uh, if all those projects 
uh, you want to do and you want some finance related to it, that is simply known as green finance. It encompasses a range of financial instruments, investments and lending practices that aim to promote positive environmental outcomes while simultaneously delivering financial return. See, mostly in all countries, the policies of government or the banks is that they provide uh, funds to the basic nest for the basic necessities. Like if you want to purchase a car, if you want to purchase a house for yourself, you will get funds easily. And if you want to start up an uh, uh, industry or you want to do, uh, uh, have some loan for the business purpose, again, there are various policies uh, uh, as per the priorities decided by the government. So again, this is uh, going to be a very much uh, priority sector uh, in the coming future that if you want to invest something in a project which will lead to uh, less carbon generating uh, uh, company uh, 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 products or the things in a fashion that it relates to your sustainable environment, then uh, banks and uh, uh, other uh, financial institutions would be helping out in uh, providing funds for those specific purposes. The basic objective, as we can see, is uh, uh, to give finance to all those industries who would be contributing to a low carbon, resource efficient and environmentally responsible economy. Let us now understand the, the difference between the green and traditional finance. As we all know, this green finance is totally about looking to the environment aspect in first go. So it supports the purpose of this green finance is basically to support uh, environmentally sustainable projects and initiatives that have positive environmental and social impacts. So while giving the finance, the financial institution or the other bodies would be firstly considering whether the project really focuses on the environmental and social goals. On the contrast, uh, the traditional finance, as we all know, it, uh, it basically sees whether the, uh, uh, the project is feasible in terms of finances only. So it checks the profitability. While in uh, green finance, we are not very much concerned about the profit aspect, but we are very much concerned about the um, uh, green, uh, the environmental issues, which we must uh, focus nowadays. Secondly, uh, these are long-term sustainable projects. These green finance are obviously long-term sustainable projects. On the other hand, these uh, traditional finance could not be uh, very much uh, uh, relating to that uh, long-term aspects. Then again, what is uh, uh, there about the transparency and reporting? Regarding green finance, it requires a detailed information about the environmental and social impacts of investments. Disclosure of ESG performance in common is very common here. So uh, basically, it is related to environment, social governance performance. It, ESG stands for that. So nowadays, uh, in many countries, we can find uh, the social audits going on or the environmental audits going on, which actually judges whether you are capable enough to sustain the uh, environment or your uh, particular your industry or whatever you are uh, manufacturing is causing less harm to the environment as such. And that is being reported day in and day out. Again, the regulatory environment with respect to green finance is that government nowadays promote and incentivize uh, by providing some tax benefits, subsidies and regulatory support to these uh, uh, green finance sector industries. Then again, in the traditional uh, uh, finance, focus is basically on the financial stability and the consumer protection, basically. So what aspect is missing in the traditional finance is the environmental and the social impact altogether. So nowadays, mostly the countries uh, are looking for the projects which are more eco-friendly and thereby they are giving some tax benefits or subsidies to them. So what are the benefits of green banking altogether? We must have understood it by now that uh, we can help our environment or we can help our uh, new uh, the coming generations to have a better future, a sustainable future. Then green deposits drive investments in eco-friendly and sustainable projects. So if you are depositing or if you are investing something in this uh, uh, green uh, uh, environment, basically, then you will be providing very much to the in, uh, sustainable future altogether. 
it promotes a healthier greener future and again um, if banks are taking up these kind of projects then it helps paperless banking and it uh, helps in preserving the trees as well as nowadays we see that uh, uh, digitalization has reduced the use of paper as it was used earlier so the change in technology is bringing somewhat uh, addition to the environment and it is creating a better environment no doubt bottlenecks and how to mitigate so we all understand that these uh, kind of policies are very much uh, uh, they are very much uh, in relation to the um, future generation and they are uh, uh, actually going to help the sustainable future but what are the bottlenecks and why the uh, banks or the other uh, investors they are not putting their efforts into it why they are not looking forward to it so and how to mitigate all those uh, we will now see that so first is there is very limited access to data and information so if i want to start up some project uh, with relation to some renewable energy or some uh, uh, solar uh, project if i want to start the uh, data is very limited the information is not uh, easily accessible and what can be a solution to that government industry association and financial institutions can work to improve data transparency and reporting ensuring that relevant environmental information is readily available to the investors so this is very much a uh, need of the r again the next uh, problem which we face here is the risk perception and uncertainty because this is a long term project and a huge investment is involved in these kind of projects and always there is a risk whether uh, people would like this kind of uh, thing or not suppose if i compare the normal two wheeler with a e vehicle nowadays so it is no doubt much costlier the uh, looks are also not uh, not that uh, good maybe and uh, there is always a comparison between the existing technology and this new version so again there is a lot of risk associated with that again there is a problem of limited expertise and capacity because this is all together a new scenario new area uh, to uh, experience so the people are not very much uh, expert here so again and again research and developments have to take place so that people become more knowledgeable and they can enhance their capacity of course there are cost barriers and therefore we are again and again saying that green finance institutions should be established and more and more focus should be there on these green projects and government should take steps for that social and political change challenges are again a matter in that then again a uh, long back uh, payback period is there because the project itself takes a long time so the payback period also gets uh, uh, elab uh, elaborated in such uh, in such cases so let us understand the the green finance uh, 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 products which are available so one of them is green bonds what are these green bonds green bonds and debt securities are issued by the government corporations or other entities to raise funds for environmentally friendly projects just like you understand the normal bonds it is solely for the purpose of uh, environment friendly projects so if these kind of bonds are issued by government or some other agencies these are known as green bonds and these the proceeds here are to be used specifically for uh, these projects only which relates to the environment like uh, renewable energy installations energy efficiency improvements etc another uh, area could be another product could be sustainability linked loans these loans are uh, where the interest rates or terms are linked to the borrower's achievement of predetermined sustainability targets such as reducing carbon emissions or increasing energy efficiency so if you have set a target for them that uh, you will be able to reduce uh, such uh, carbon emission by so and so percentage your interest rates or the terms of repayment would be linked to that so this is basically known as sustainability linked loans again there is one more product called green microfinance so basically a uh, microfinance institution offers small loans to individuals or communities for sustainable projects such as clean water and sanitation in, uh, initiatives solar energy excess and sustainable agriculture so even if uh, micro uh, sector wants to 
do something for the environment they should not feel that they are not getting enough funds to do so so these uh, uh, institutions are established for them as well in some parts of the world so again there is one more concept uh, called green loans uh, this is similar to what we have just uh, understood uh, they provide loan basically to those projects which are uh, eco friendly then crowd funding is also av available for the green projects this is an online platform where individuals are uh, allowed to contribute funds uh, for some specific green projects then renewable energy funds these are also available then carbon offsetting services this we must understand carbon offsetting services individuals or companies can purchase carbon offsets to compensate for their carbon emissions so this is a kind of credit points or uh, credit service which is given by the government so if you are emitting less carbon you will be uh, considered more important or uh, as compared to the others who are uh, emitting higher carbon uh, from their industries so to offset or to have a, a, a balance in the whole uh, society as such the companies or the industries which are emitting less uh, carbon are given credit points which they can give to the companies or the industries which are generating more carbons and they can offset uh, these two and they can uh, very well earn money also uh, while doing so carbon markets and trading carbon markets involve the trading of carbon credits or allowances allowing companies to buy and sell emission allowances then again there is a scope of green insurance and risk management this is a totally different uh, 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 thing to see upon this is altogether a new area to capture green insurance so what are the recent trends are there any industries which are into this uh, particular uh, green uh, projects and all yes there are many and industry wise i have taken some examples also like in case of financial institutions bank of america has committed to a dollar 3 billion uh, sustainable finance goal so they have committed that whosoever comes to them they will be giving funds up to this much amount they have kept separately for this particular purpose again pnp paribas has also committed for a similar kind of uh, financing then in automotive industry toyota is known for its hybrid and fuel cell vehicles Nissan is again developing electrical vehicles then FMCG industry is also there which aims like Nestle has aimed to achieve zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 similarly the industries with relation to fashion and apparel are also into it then real estate and construction industries are also uh, taking much more pride in saying that we are Uh, going to have projects with uh, which relate to the sustainable uh, construction projects in agriculture and food industry every time we see that new innovations are happening and different uh, projects are coming up to sustain the agricultural uh, methods then in transportation healthcare industry everywhere we can see this again we are here to understand and see some success stories uh, also like uh, green bond issuance by apple in 2016 itself they had done this and they had issued this green bond and they could generate a lot of funds and they could uh, uh, support initiatives like solar installation and energy efficient buildings etc to reduce the carbon footprint then green climate fund was also uh, established then china had also uh, catered to this uh, green finance initiatives then again we have climate investment funds Tesla's green innovation and investment strategy is there we are already aware about it then green building initiatives are also there uh, it is basically related to construction of projects with relation to uh, uh, some more sustainance sustainability and these are the various success stories now let us uh, understand it from the perspective of G20 how to pursue this thing so as g20 countries have uh, made a pact that they would be contributing to this green finance by these for adopting these measures like policy and regulatory frameworks would be uh, designed in such a fashion that they cater to the green finance goal then green finance infrastructure would be developed 
capacity building and training would be given integration of esg factors would be uh, seen and implemented simultaneously innovation and research part would be done by all to increase the market transparency liquidity etc etc how can countries cooperate with each other for adopting green finance so let us understand it from the uh, country's perspective how they can do it you know, at their pace so sharing the best practices and experience because each country might not be capable enough to do research work and why to do it again and again why not to share your best practice with others and experience with others so that is one thing which countries can develop second is capacity building and technical assistance uh, if any country wants some kind of technical assistance the others should be ready to uh, give that and that is the basic idea how you can develop these kind of uh, scenario harmonizing standards and taxonomies as we have all understood that there has to be a similar tax structure in all the countries and similar a uh, green finance policy is also in different countries so standardization is again a must thing for everyone then these are again the various uh, things which we can see trade agreements and incentives can also be planned uh, by various countries with respect to that then what are the roles of regulators industries and public at large so for green financing basically government needs to frame a regulatory setup all together and a institutional body is to be there which can regularly monitor and check uh, with respect to the green finance then tariff can be designed if a can, uh, if a particular company or industry is not uh, you know adhering to those norms then taxes could be imposed on that then again subsidies and guarantees should be given by the country to uh, encourage more and more participants into that business men how can they help they can uh, you know if they have funds they should involve into these kind of practices they can have some technical innovation at their end and the managerial uh, 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 people they have to actually understand that is the need of the r uh, to involve uh, their uh, some percentage of their uh, uh, overall uh, capital structure into this green financing citizens basically have to understand that they should uh, now be made aware and they should now be willing to pay for these kind of uh, activities and it is basically if when the citizens are educated that they have to involve into these activities they will surely um, act a very act as a very crucial uh, uh, part they will uh, in fact perform a very crucial role here so these are the uh, india's climate smart investment potential which they have uh, given that uh, in order to build a 3 trillion or 5 trillion economy this is what they are going to do uh, with respect to the green finance part thank you so much that is all from my side thank you thank you divya it was a great presentation thank you mr divya so uh, yeah that was a very comprehensive pre oh, presentation thank you yeah before i sum up uh, uh, dr Na dr vijay you are on mute yes dr srividya we don't hear you dr nada would you like to add something to this and then i will sum it up Well, I want to say that Dr. Divya really makes an amazing presentation uh, on this topic, uh, because today, according to everything what we are doing, uh, green digital, green everything, so uh, green banking, green financing, it is very important. Uh, we need to understand that even uh, our currency all needs to be green. Uh, how we do that? Like example, what I do with my students. uh we like uh, we have the virtual train so we are making our uh, our green money uh today uh, all this uh, uh, what is going online and everything uh, i hope that one day that really we will never have that uh, money in our hands because we need to avoid that uh today so that is the way how we will uh, solve uh, so many problems uh if we talk about the taxation uh 
uh, what can we do in the green uh, green way with the taxation that is still that is still a big uh, enigma. Uh, Dr. Divya uh, last time was uh, last time was uh, was in the field of the uh, financing. Uh, it was really uh, amazing. Uh, she explained us all of this. Uh, so her topic today, uh, green finance for sustainable solutions, uh, giving and what I especially like uh, in this presentation, uh, she explained us uh, what is the difference, uh, I mean, what are the purpose for the green finance and what is from the traditional finance. So we now learn that we need to have uh, uh, for the uh, we need to have a environment uh, which is positive environment and which will have the social impact before before our traditional finance were based on the financial profitability risk and market trends so the difference today is uh, we will not maximize these financial returns on the investments through this that was the purpose we will support environmentally this sustainable project then uh, also for the long-term sustainability, uh, she said that we will promote more projects, uh, more practices, uh, which will contribute to a more resilient and environment uh, future. Uh, we are all living for this uh, sustainable future. Uh, even uh, not talking, uh, even not this part from traditional finance that uh, uh, in traditional finance, the prioritization was uh, on the social sustainability, uh, long-term environment, uh, ESG, uh, which is incorporated uh, in the green uh, finance. Uh, what about the uh, transparency and reporting? Uh, she said that uh, uh, ESG is a performance which is common. Uh, so all, for all the environmental and social impacts of the investments, uh, for all we need to invest. So it is not, uh, uh, not focus primarily only on the financial performances uh, that are uh, that have the uh, social impact. Then about the regulatory, which we learned today a lot and here today, uh, the regulatory environment. Uh, talking about the government, the government needs to promote uh, the tax benefits. We need more tax benefits. Uh, we need this subsidize. Uh, uh, we need a regulatory support, so that is important. And till till traditional finance is talking about there uh, is a focus on the financial stability and the consumer protection. So how to protect consumer and what are the but what are the benefits of green banking? Uh, I like um, uh, I like the way she explained uh, it in the form of the tree. So you can do your bit to ensure your sustainable future. Then green deposits, uh, green deposits are driving investments in our eco-friendly and sustainable projects. Uh, we have so many eco-sustainable projects. Then uh, green banking uh, will promote uh, the green future uh, through the awareness and uh, we will have this. Uh, uh, we will have this populist banking, which will help preserve the trees. Uh, I can say that uh, uh, we in Europe uh, are really doing a lot in this green banking. Uh, especially, uh, we are getting so many grants for this project. So this is uh, for us a big motivation. Uh, we always need to find something uh, what is new. So that is the way how we can get the money. So we will uh, hear it, IAU, uh, we are also doing a lot on this, uh, this green, I mean the green. So I hope that we will start also with this uh, uh, green banking. Uh, and then uh, uh, when, when I ask somebody in which way your country uh, is going in the depth. So we know that uh, we are using the bonds. Uh, the bonds needs to be green bonds. So this green bonds will give us a security uh, by the government. That is the way what the government is giving the corporation. Uh, on that way, uh, we will raise the funds for the, again, eco environment friendly project. So let us learn, let us think about this bonds uh, because uh, how will you share that? How will you share that? You need to support uh, 
long-term financing uh, with a low carbon, uh, low carbon resilient project. Uh, that is one of the benefits of the green bonds. Then, uh, then for the investors, the green bonds are carrying on the environment. Uh, what it is meaning? It is meaning that we will need to have a benefit without the sacrificing other financial returns. We all want a financial return, return on investment, famously ROI. And uh, for issues, uh, there are... Uh, uh, we need new investors, uh, new investors with who will attract uh, these uh, things. So I think that today, today was really very, uh, uh, very great day uh, with a very important topic uh, about these taxes, touching all of these parts, uh, each one of our great esteemed uh, guests today were amazing. So our dear audience, uh, you are really lucky to have this G20 summit uh, in the organization of International Intercept University and G20 summit. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Srividi, uh, this was really amazing. Dr. Sandy, uh, great. Uh, here is our uh, Europe head, Dr. Linga is with us. Uh, thank you. And our amazing uh, Jose from Brazil, professor, we are learning continuously from you. Uh, great, Dr. Divya, Dr. Divya, you are famous, you know. Uh, I really uh, appreciate uh, the knowledge today, uh, which is shared, you know, especially because I'm coming from this uh, also field for, so I like people who are working on this uh, new innovation, inventions, creations, and opportunities. So respected Gustavo, thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Uh, uh, Sandy, will you, uh, before uh, our last words of Dr. Srividya, uh, will you show our audience what we make till now and what is expect, what we, what we will have uh, at our next uh, Sunday? Yeah, uh, sorry, I couldn't keep my video on. Uh, no I problem, Dr. Srividya. Yeah, uh, I tried to see it. you it's now. having some problem. Oh, yes. So, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm not able to. The Previously, I shared my screen. Yes. And I had to really exit out. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Ms. Sandy, do you mind sharing the screen this time, please? Yeah, let me try doing it this time. Yeah. Give me a minute, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ms. Divya. Until she's ready, it was a fabulous presentation. And uh, no doubt that you will be a real asset to any organization that you're going to go into, really. Thank you so much. And um, beautiful presentation to just sum it up saying that the green finance benefiting the organizations of the world. And what is green finance? And you covered this topic mm -hmm. so well, why we need to have green financing and the types of green finance, mentioning about green mortgages, green loans, and green credit cards and everything as such. Uh, and green banks, green bonds, and what are the benefits of it? Encouraging the spread of technologies, development, and the environmental friendly infrastructure. That's the key point of it when we talk about sustainable finance. When we talk about for sustainable finance, we're talking about uh, finance without the actual word money, the actual rupee or the coin. So how to go about it? It's all online banking. And that's what is the whole thing is summing up as green finance and <laughs> <laughs> which has a comparative knowledge and how it adds the business value that you have just mentioned and how it adds or enhances the economic prospects that are involved in it. Of course, you did mention about the risk and the opportunity involved in it com in comparison with the sustainable finance and green finance in the banking sector. That's going to be the rule of the world. That's what G20 is summing it up, as you rightly mentioned. Thank you so much, Ms. Divya. That was a wonderful presentation and all. Thank you. So, Ms. Sandhya, are you ready? Sandhya. Okay, let me try. Uh, let me try. It's okay. I will try. Don't worry. Okay. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay, you Let's can try. Let's see what happens. Yes, let us see. Yeah, there we are. Just okay. a second. Hope it happens. Hope it happens. Yes. Yes, yes. you can. Okay. Yes, I am there. Yes. 
Madam Sanda, yeah. Madam Sanda Balaji, over to you, please. Thank yeah, you. thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, week after week, every Sunday evening, we dedicate ourselves to the cause of sustainable, uh, sustainable world. And here we deliberate on various topics. We began on the 9th of July to talk about Education 360, with our presidency being to ensure inclusive, equitable, quality education and promote lifelong opportunities, learning opportunities for all. And the week followed with Shakti Spectrum, which focused on women and youth empowerment. And uh, we focused on a paradigm shift from individual development to leadership development and community partnership on both these aspects. On 23rd of July, Mark, uh, our discussions on digitalization and innovation with science stream, vocation and employability with the next production revolution as our main focus. On 30th of July, entrepreneurship and MSME was our focus and our presidency was to modernize and strengthen the industrial units to make them globally competent. The month of August began with energy for resources, sources, sustainability and employability, and our presidency was efficient and sustainable use of natural resources with three R's, RE dialogue. The week after, we talked about health is wealth, agriculture and food security. Our presidency was a global view of GVC patterns, opportunities and the role of policy. The week after, we deliberated on inclusive inclusion financial architecture and international growth with our presidency being accelerated inclusive and resilient growth and today the 27th of august 2023 we have discussed and deliberated in detail on international taxation trade and in investments with our presidency being to reform reshape and restructure and reconstitute the international tax architecture the next week will be one of the most interesting weeks. That is on the 3rd September, 2023, we will discuss and deliberate how heritage, culture, and tourism can contribute to a sustainable world. And the week after, on the 10th September, 2023, we will focus on our way forward, how to attain our goals of 2030 agenda and sustainable development. Our presidency will be accelerating progress towards the SDG for an ambitious G20 action plan. On the 17th of September, 2023, we will close with our validatory function and deliberate on publishing papers and patent submission. Thank you all. That's, that's it from my side. Thank you so much, Madam Sandhya. Yes, thank you. So next week, we are going to talk about culture. The two weeks that we were talking about finance, 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 and it was really too much to handle uh, money in hand and money in banks and money. And um, one money is such thing. If you don't have also, it's a problem. And if you have too much also, then it's a big problem to handle. So in either ways, it's a big problem to handle. And overall, we handled so many situations of today, like the speaker not able to log in, and she was not able to present, and then managed it too. So uh, we just went around. Dr. Virginia went out. She couldn't come in. I were logged out, and so I couldn't come in. So with all these things, we are learning to live talking about sustainability, talking about metacognition abilities, talking about uh, uh, handling challenges and presenting it towards uh, end of the day, there is only one word which is on the baseline of anything and everything that's passion for doing things. Why are we really doing it on a Sunday? It's Sunday morning for uh, Dr. Juice and Mr. Gasso, and uh, it's Sunday evening for us from here, uh, from UAE and from India. And um, I think it's Sunday afternoon for from Croatia and also for Dr. Inga and uh, Sunday night from India for uh, Madam Sandhya and um, Divya. And why are we here? Though we are from different parts of the globe and different time schedules, uh, we're all here for our passion. We just want to share our knowledge. We just want to share our expertise. We just want to show that how passionate we are, how we love doing this and how we are going to contribute. And the way we are contributing to the community, that's the thing that's the best part of it and that we should cherish and nourish and uh, hope everybody will agree with me. Thank you so much. 
And uh, as we all say, my own sweet saying that celebrate every single moment of your life so as to evolve as community, self-community and tenets and that we take it forward to the community. Whatever we take from the community, we should be able to give it back to the community. That's the thing. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks you. Thanks one and all. And of course, a special thanks to Madam Laila who had joined us today. In spite of her busy schedule, she was not able to even give, her, give more time to us, but uh, her presence was really an inspiration and that was really a good motivation for us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, I'm not missing you, Mr. Balaji. You're always there with us and your presence is always felt and we always uh, keep you in our, uh, into our team, into our fold, always through Madam Sandhya Balaji, definitely. Thank you, Dr. Nada. Without Dr. Nada, nothing can happen. And uh, she is the pillar of support. She's the grace bone of inspiration, motivation for us to guide it through and through and taking it forward. And Dr. Virginia, in spite of not getting a uh, camera working, in spite of not getting her audio working, but still she's there with all the gleaming green face over there. We love you, Dr. Virginia, for that. And definitely Dr. Inka, thank you so much. Thanks for being there. To be say that yes, no, yes, no, no. you are there. Thank you. Thanks for being there with us always. And Dr. Srividya, how will we make today uh, a photo? We cannot see you now, <laughs> you and Dr. Virginia. <laughs> Let me try. I'm not able Please. to Please. Oh, oh, we see you. Great. <laughs> oh, don't Thank move. You. Come back. Okay, I'm not moving. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, with all these things, one person deserves to have a great mention over here is our Mr. Piyush Pandit, sir. The great inspiration, the great educationist, and uh, yeah, there is no word. Whatever we are going to say about him, it's going to be very, very less. Without him, without this, without him, there is no IAU. There is no such a platform to share our thoughts. There is definitely. He has been extending all his brilliant support, whichever way that we ask for, how much ever does we ask for, that he's always there and never ever said no to anything. That's the thing. I cannot do this or is it difficult? No, nothing, nothing, nothing is difficult. Nothing is impossible for him. Anything and everything in the world that he's going to achieve. And he's such a brilliant person. Thank you so much, Peer, sir. With, uh, right from the bottom of our hearts, we really. And before we leave, I just want to take one more second. As Madam Sandhya is all tucked up, dressed up today, we wish uh, the people from South India happy Onam. I think everybody can Thank join you. Happy yes. Onam. Uh -huh. happy I, Onam. If you really happy want to say in that language, them. it's Onam Asham Shekal. Yeah. yeah. Onam Asham Shekal. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Am I right, Mr. Balaji? That's very true. And Onam is a festival that actually teaches people to be equal amongst themselves. So it says, uh, the entire community, people, citizen will be equal in front of uh, everyone. So that is basically the festival that we celebrate. Everyone celebrates Onam equally. So, yes, it is one for all, all for one. That's true. That's true. And we are oh. all with the bonding of love, bonding of love, bonding of affection, bonding of togetherness, yeah. all with one it's mission. From one different mission. parts That's of the globe great. have joined here. So it's a great, great moment to say happy onam to all of you. Thank yes, you. happy Thank onam you. from our side Thank as well. Thank you. And today is also our daughter's birthday, my eldest daughter's birthday. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Thank you. Very happy birthday. Thank you. Thank yes, you, thank yeah. you. You were saying something. Right. Let us, let us see the most famous festivals and traditions at the next Sunday. We have culture, yes. heritage. Yes. So yes. we are waiting yes. you, India, to show and us to all your rich culture and heritage. So many festivals. I, I say every day is something in India. Yes, we celebrate every day. Every day something, yes. 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 Okay, we come to the end. So, uh, once again, we want to thank uh, to our great Sir Piyush, who is not with us, but he's watching us. He's always here. So, 
uh, our great uh, uh, esteemed speakers, our great organizers, uh, Dr. Dr. Srividia, Dr. Sandy, from the, from the side of G20 to our great IIU team, uh, all and not, yes, of course, to our amazing audience who is supporting us uh, every day in everything. So till tomorrow, tomorrow we have a session. So till tomorrow, uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy, uh, and let, let us continue learning and growing together. Bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thanks I hope you click the photo. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.